Hey everyone, I'm just doing a quick intro on this episode today. It was a super special episode for me and I'm just really excited to share it. This is a, I got to interview Jimmy Pattison and, you know, he really needs no introduction, but, you know, I just got to say he was so wonderful to spend a few hours with. He was open, he was welcoming, he treated me like I was the only person in the world, he didn't rush me out, he walked me around his office, showed me his wall of fame of all the people he's met in all his years in business. He showed me his general ledger from his first day in business, first month and first year in business, and then walked me through to where he is today, which was just an amazing journey and educational experience for myself. So I just want to say I was on cloud nine this whole time. I left there, you know, he he just taught me so much. I just left there so pumped and excited. And I'm really excited for this episode uh, and to have spent that time with him. It was amazing. And I hope you enjoy it. It is fairly YPO focused, but there's a lot of other nuggets in there as well. Enjoy. All right. Well, you know, I just wanted to say thanks for for doing this today. I, I, uh, as the incoming chapter chair for YPO British Columbia, I've been spending a lot of time kind of going back in history because I'm, I'm the learning chair now, and I, in September I start my role as the chair. So I wanted to just kind of go, you know, what, what is YPO about? What does it mean? And, you know, you've been so gracious and generous with your time with YPO. I've seen you speak at a number of events over the last 10 years. I've been a member for about 14 years. And so I thought, you know, we have this new member dinner every year too. We sort of bring the new members in, tell them about what YPO is about. And every time I'm there, I'm like, I wish Jimmy was here to talk about it because the way you've always spoken about YPO has been so passionate and energetic. And, and so I called you up and, and here we are. So I, again, I just really appreciate you saying yes to this. The, uh, what I wanted to know is, you know, just kind of going back, you know, you joined YPO in 1964. It was a, you know, basically a four-year-old chapter at that point. I'm just kind of curious, you know, what brought you to YPO? How did you find out about it, and, and why did you join? I find, found out about it from a fellow from Toronto, a car dealer. He was out here, a General Motors. I was working for General Motors, Bo McLean, Bo Mac, right. uh, down at 615 Burrard Street. And I was working there, and this fellow came out. General Motors brought uh, four or five dealers out to see how we were doing things. And uh, because we were were doing quite well, I was working for this company, Bull McDonald, and their business had, I was the general manager (coughs) at the time. And uh, so General Motors sent out about 10 people, all car dealers from Toronto, to see how we were doing things. And this one guy, dealer, uh, after we were all through a couple of days of talking, said, Jimmy, you should belong to YPO. And I said, what's YPO? And he said, he explained what it was. And uh, so he said, I'll give you the names of uh, some members here and you can call them. So I did. And uh, they didn't want me in oh, really? because there there was two car dealers. Duick was oh, one, yeah, and the other guy was Evan Wolf. And they did not we want me in YPO. They didn't want a competitor uh, in. The, well, in the... they there was two car dealers, and they didn't want any more. Oh wow! As time went by, uh, I got. A couple people here. One was a Ralph Cunningham, who was a drugstore guy, and the other guy was my landlord for my body shop. Okay. And uh, they then um, supported me. This is over a period of a year or so uh, to get in. And I got in. They vouched for you and said this guy's... They vouched for me. Initially, there was two car dealers in, and they didn't want me in. 
and uh, Duix was one of them. And but anyways, time went by. Uh, they this Cunningham, the drugstore, very solid BC family, and he was sort of a leader, and so he got me, he got me in. That's great. And with a couple other people's help. The other guy was my landlord who had the 7-Up franchise. Oh, okay. And that's how I got in. Excellent. And, uh, and Maureen Chat, my secretary here, she was, um, she's been with me 60 years. Yeah. <laughs> and so she, she wound, as time went by, she wound up putting on YPO uh, events as I got involved with it. And I, I went down to South Africa at meetings and traveled all over the world. We had a lot. The good news was the big break that I got was BC was not in the Canadian chapters. Right. It was in Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii. Okay. That's a good group to be with, though. So <laughs> I was, uh, this group was right off the bat and had these special meetings that you, I'm sure you still have. And I'd go to Hawaii to these meetings. I'd go to California. I'd go to Palm Springs for at a different place, have different meetings there, because it was all American. We were the only Canadian chapter. Oh, really? I don't think I knew that history, because Canada is, is its region now. Oh, Canada. B BC was in the Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and Hawaii district of YPO. And I was dealing with all Americans. And it was that group, a guy by the name of Bob Halliday with Boise, Idaho. He came from Boise, Idaho, and there was a lumber company called Boise something or other. And I got the vision of doing what I'm doing today from YPO chapter in British Columbia that belonged to Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and Hawaii. Wow. So you were quite involved, you know, when, when you started out, you got involved and traveled and went to all these... Oh, I never missed a meeting. Yeah. If there was one in Hawaii, I went. One in Washington, I never missed a meeting. And Maureen Chant, when we had the meetings here, she helped me put on the meetings here right. as time went by. It's because I became, well, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for YPO. That's amazing. And it's, it's, it's really interesting that you mentioned Maureen because that's one of the things we think about when we're talking about the education chairs is they have to have a fantastic partner or EA to help because oh, yeah. you're putting on a mini wedding almost oh, when you have 100, absolutely. 200 people. Wow. You have to have great help around you. So that's awesome. So, uh, but Maureen's been with me 60 years yeah. and, uh, and she started, we started at 18th and Canby in a three pump gas station and she worked in the parts department i didn't her i didn't hire her and that's how we got started well i gotta say in my dealings with her for this meeting she was one of the most efficient people i've ever met with Good. asking me questions before i thought of them and she's 83 years old now <laughs> it's like there's a 24-hour rule in ypo right you have to answer or respond to someone within 24 hours you know that's sort of the etiquette and she's more like two, you know, less than two hours. Like she's ahead of me. It was great. So she was wonderful to work with. You know, t can you tell me more about that? You said you said you wouldn't, your business wouldn't be the same or wouldn't be here if it well, wasn't for YPO. Well, I was a car dealer. Right. I, we had, well, I can show you the picture. We had a three-pump gas station and a two-car showroom. <clears throat> and I got started there. The reason I got started there is because the General Motors dealer, he was going under. He hadn't been making money. And this opportunity came up, and uh, General Motors gave me the opportunity to take this over. At, uh, and so that's where I started. <clears throat> and then along came YPO, which I belonged to, and my landlord of the gas station that we had was this fellow, Abe Gray, and uh, and we had a body shop 
and he had the 7-Up franchise, and he was in YPO. And you had this idea come out from a meeting about how to structure your business? or, or Well, no, but, but when you go to YPO meetings, people talk about this. And, and I happened to be, because we were in the American group, yeah. I was the guys that came to the meeting when you put the court, of the, you know, like the, the, the region together mm -hmm. at these meetings in Hawaii or Portland, Oregon. Uh, these all these guys had been exposed to conglomerates. Right. There was only there. There was nobody that had one, but they were talking about them all the time. And so I got this idea of, well, I don't have to be just a car dealer, and uh, and so uh, and we got into leasing, and then we got into radio, and then from radio we got into uh, into uh, groceries. And so one thing led to another to where we are today. So, so YPO sort of, you know, made you think about other possibilities, like sort of broaden your, your... No, YPO gave me the, the exposure to the guys in the States that were into conglomerates, like right. Boise, I'd, in, uh, Boise Cascade was a conglomerate. Right. And this guy, Boise, and Bob Halliday, his name was, uh, he was a very strong guy in YPO. In fact, when I got going, I put him on our board. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's excellent. Now, what, what does it mean to you? And, you know, I, I, I kind of, like I said, I go back. Like, what does it mean to you to be a YPO? -er? And, and one of the things I think a lot about is even I go to this meeting, you know, we've never met. You said yes, you made it really easy. I've got so many stories about that through YPO where you've hosted forum groups for people that have you know, wanted to talk with you and you've been so gracious and generous with your time. You've, I had a really neat story about a new member. I talked to all new members that come on board and I said, just make sure you reach out and talk to people and you know, phone somebody if you need help. And <laughs> I talked to him about a month later to check in and I said, you know, how's it going? He goes, well, it's really strange, I phoned I phoned Maureen at Patterson Group, and she said, well, I have an opening tomorrow at 1, you know, just kind of a fluke. If you can come in, he came in, and I said, are you kidding me? Like, such a great impression for this new member that got to speak with you, said that, you know, you had all the time in the world for him. You didn't rush him out of the office. So I was just like, wow, this guy really gets YPO. And We would not be here today <clears throat> if it wasn't for YPO in Vancouver. <clears throat> and, and what do you think that, you know, what, what sort of should a member sort of embody or, or model for that? Like, what, what would, what's your advice to members to be a great YPO? -er? Because you got help, obviously, or got... Well, you got to participate. Right. you got to go to the meetings. <clears throat> and, you know, you can go to the meetings and, and be there, or you can get, get, get involved in the organization. And when they ask you to do something, we did it. Maureen... Chat. She she spent more time at Y doing putting on YPO stuff than I ever did, <laughs> yeah. and uh, because we were it it changed our lives. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and and I, I love what you just said about going to the meetings. Now, the, the, because the chapter and the region have changed so much, there's a lot of experiences that people get that are, you know, they're either in a forum or they go to the BC meetings. But what I heard from you, which I thought was wonderful, is this outside the chapter, international events, you know, that, that's not a lot of people go to those because it's, it's not on the radar as much as it would have been back then. But Listen, <clears throat> I went to Greece with YPO. Yeah. They had a special meeting there in Athens, and I went. And they have, they'd have them in Hawaii, they'd have them in very, and, but I went to every YPO meeting I could go to because it changed my life. And all I knew was selling used cars and uh, new cars, and here was a whole new world. And I went for it. Excellent. You know, and it just resonates so great. You know, it's ba it's what you put into it is what you get out of it, for sure. Oh, it's like everything else. <clears throat> the more you put into something, the more you get out of it. Yeah. But I remember going to South Africa. Wow. There was a meeting. Yeah. And I went to it from here. And uh, <clears throat> but I never 
I was very active because it changed my life. I learned all the time. And uh, we would not be here today if it wasn't for YPO in Vancouver. Yeah, that's excellent. I wouldn't mind shifting to your business a little bit as well, but I, I, I would like to just understand too, like if you look back on some pivotal moments on, on someone that's helped you in YPO, you know, you mentioned Boise already, but is there other moments that you can think of that, you know, maybe you could, you, and of course we don't want to breach any confidentiality or anything like that, but you know, that sort of were pivotal and I had to make a call or I had to phone somebody in YPO and they helped me because this is what we see a lot within YPO is somebody got me out of a jam. I needed to make a vote. I can tell you the exact moment. I was in YPO and, and there was a chapter meeting and they just, and it was in Victoria. And the meeting was there and it was in a hotel and I was walking past I was just walking through the lobby, but there was a bar sort of uh, adjacent. And as I was walking past it, this other guy from YPO said, you know, we've managed to control. He was talking to this guy, and I just heard him say, we got control with the company, and we had less than 2% stock. <laughs> <laughs> That perks your ears up, right? How did wow. you do that? <laughs> I never forgot it. And I thought, well, my gosh. If that, that, and I knew the family. I knew the company. Yeah. And, uh, and they said they'd got public company listed in Toronto, and they got control, he said, with only 2% of the stock. So, boy, I got Marina into it, down looking at public companies, getting the, the uh, uh, annual report. Right. And looking at the shareholders and seeing if there's anything, and and um, and by golly, we got started with a public company that unfriendly in um, Neon Products. Okay. And it was Neon Products, public company listed in Toronto, and the fellow's father was a. Uh, was with the bank and uh, a director of the bank at the time. But anyway, um, I started to do an un... In fact, we've got somewhere in here, those red books, there'll be pictures of the, the newspaper articles where we tried to t take and did get control of the company in an unfriendly takeover. Really? And that was all from a all from walking by the bar. And I, might be I was walking, it. just walking through it to go to the, where I was going, and this fellow—I won't name his name—but he was a, a good YPOer, and he said, "You know, we got control of the company, and we only had two percent." <laughs> <laughs> and they named the company. I knew the company. Yeah. And I went after the company and got it. Excellent. That's great. That's so great. And now. I looked at your website. I love your website, by the way. It's just fascinating, the Patterson Group, and how you put all the different businesses on there, some numbers on the website. You know, $12 billion in sales, 50,000 plus employees. And so it sounds like the, the decision to structure the way that you do business is acquiring businesses mostly. Like, have you started a business from scratch? Not one. Not one. And that was. Wrong. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> My leasing company. Oh, out of the auto? Car leasing. Yes, okay. And I, the day I went into business, I always gave priority to the leasing company. Okay. And we started with one car, and today we have over 30,000 vehicles on lease. Unreal. We're the largest private company in Canada in the lease business. Unreal. Car and truck. I think the other thing I, I was, I've just noticed about you is your, all the time, is there sort of a positive can-do attitude, and I'm just really curious about that as, as a parent. You know, I've got four young kids, and there's sort of this nature versus nurture discussion all the time, and you always seem to have a smile on your face, quick to smile. Like, wh where do you think that came from? I just I think it's a great, great trait. Well, I just uh, have been very blessed. I've been very blessed. I was an only child. We didn't have any money, our family, but that didn't matter. Uh, I couldn't have had better parents. And uh, 
I've just been very grateful to the good Lord for my health and my family, that I had the mother and father that I had, that we came to Vancouver, that I got into YPO, all the things that I had Maureen all these years. Yeah. I couldn't have had a better wife. I've been, um, my wife right now is 93 years old, and I've been married, uh, I've been married uh, 71 years. Unbelievable. That's fantastic. I've been married 71 years to the same wife. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and so it sounds like you're just very grateful and, and have a lot of gratitude, so happiness comes from gratitude. Well, I don't know much about that. All I know is that I couldn't have, I, I just, I just, I couldn't have had better parents. We, the only thing we didn't have, we didn't have money, we didn't own a house. <clears throat> we lived at 4893 Quebec Street. I went to Brock School at 32nd in Maine, and we rented the house $25 a month furnished. <laughs> uh, there's a new member in our chapter, and her business is called Rent It Furnished, so she'll be happy to hear that, that you got to get to $25 furnished. <laughs> No, the house was furnished. Unbelievable. And that's what we paid rent. Yeah. The other thing I noticed about your business, which I thought was kind of fun, because you have, you know, some amazing brands or, or companies, but there's, there's this kind of fun streak I noticed on your website, you know, uh, Ripley's, Guinness Book of World Records, Great Wolf Lodge. How, how did those come about? I just, I just found, find those really fun, well, fun business. The, um, well, let's start with... Uh, the Guinness, the first one is, uh, of that group was <clears throat> Ripley's Believe It or Not. I got into that. I was running Expo 86. Okay. Uh, which was, uh, you probably weren't born before no, that. No, I was. I, I, went, I took my girlfriend, to, my first girlfriend ever, oh. on the bus to Expo okay. 86. <laughs> okay, well, I was in the office. It was a Sunday afternoon. I'd been to church, and I was run down to this. It hadn't been, it wasn't built. We were in the process of building it. I didn't come into my office for three years. I worked right on the site. And I was down there Sunday afternoon, and the phone rang. I just picked it up, and a guy says, uh, I'd like to speak to Jim Patterson. I said, well, it is Jim Patterson. <laughs> well, he says, I just want to tell you, you should look at buying the worst run company in America. <laughs> I said, and what's the name of it? He says, Ripley's Believe It or Not. And I said, well, why do you say that? He says, well, I live in Victoria, and I'm the franchisee in a small town in Oregon for Ripley's Believe It or Not. And it's the worst run company. And you should buy it. And I'm running the World's Fair at that time. <laughs> Put some more on your plate. <laughs> so I phone up my right-hand guy, Bill Sleeman, his name was, who used to be my boss at General Motors when I had a car, car GM franchise. I phoned him up and I said, oh, look at, go take a look at, at what this fellow's talking about. So he, he uh, flew down to Oregon, looked at this place, and it was a Ripley's, believe it or not. <clears throat> and then uh, I said, well, go look at how many do they have? They had eight. And I said, well, go look at the eight of them. And he just flew around. One was in San Francisco. Uh, one was in Niagara Falls. One was in Florida. And anyway, he went to them. He says, Jimmy, the guy's right. They're really badly run. So let's. So I phoned the guy up, and I uh, said, "Would you be interested in selling?" Your, he said, "I would." And we bought the company. That's great. And that's that, how we got into Ripley's. And and was was Guinness closely related to no, that business? No, not at all. all. Completely separate. Now Guinness World Records. <clears throat> I was sitting in my office. Here, one uh, weekend, again it was a weekend, I got a call from a guy from New York. 
and said, Jimmy, I hear Guinness World Records could be bought. And I think you should look at it. So I took uh, my right-hand guy <clears throat> at the time, and I s sent him over to London, headquartered in London, and talked to the president. And th he said we would consider a, a, an opportunity to sell the company. So I flew over the next weekend, and uh, we shook hands on a deal, and we bought the company. That's great. You know, I see the books on your shelves here, and I just have to tell you a quick story. So my parents used to give me the Guinness Book of World Records for Christmas every year. Yeah. And it was always one of the first things that I would open because yeah. I could recognize it wrapped. Yeah. Same shape and size. But I would spend the rest of Christmas morning quoting everything from the book, you know. Hey, Dad, you know, did you know the guy with the longest fingernails is like six feet long? Or, hey, Mom, this, the tallest person is eight foot two or whatever. <clears throat> And then, so they started, give, they started hiding the book and giving it to me at the end so I could get through my other Christmas uh, gifts. And now my son, we give it to my son now, and he does the same thing. He's just flipping through it. It's a fascinating business, so thanks for keeping it going. Well, at all heck, we make money. Yeah. <clears throat> Our headquarters is London. And, uh, and then I moved uh, some offices over to New York and... Uh, and no, we've, they weren't in the, the uh, as time went by, the, we put uh, Guinness into uh, the U.S., Australia, and uh, China. We got offices in China, Guinness World Records. Yeah. We started it there. Japan, we put an office in Japan. We have to figure out how to get the YPO to break a world record. We'll have to think about that one. Great you figure it out, and we'll put it in the book. Yeah, that's great. Now, the other one I wanted to talk about was uh, Great Wolf Lodge. We've got a lot of friends that uh, drive down to the one in Oregon. I know you have the Canadian. I believe you have the Canadian. Yeah, we only to... have one, and there's only one in Canada, the Great Wolf Lodge in Niagara Falls. Right, and so I just thought I'd ask, is there any plans in Western Canada or idea? Or... There is. We've looked at it. We can't make the numbers work. Yeah. We haven't been able to make the numbers work to get a decent return on invested capital. We, now, we're doing fine in Niagara Falls, <clears throat> and uh, we built it, and it's been very successful, <clears throat> but we haven't been able to uh, duplicate the, a proper hotel, well-built, well-done, in the right location with numbers that we believe that we can get a re decent return on invested capital. Right. It's pretty tough with uh, real estate prices and everything. And well, it's, it's construction. We had, a, we had a place lined up on the, uh, uh, we, our guys wanted to go to Whistler and put one up there, and that was fine. We even bought the land, hmm. which we still own, yeah. but we couldn't make the numbers work. Yeah. I hope to see one out here or Calgary or something one day. That would be great. <laughs> it's a fun, no, fun we'll, experience. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll put another one in, but uh, it's an expensive proposition, and you've got you to uh, get good revenue, and the prices are very high, and I just didn't. We can't make the numbers work with the return that we're looking for with the return on invested capital. Right. Makes sense. Now, I, I also noticed that, um, you know, it's a question that I had, but it's right on that, that wonderful poem there about failure. You know, you, you, there was thing like, don't worry about failure, worry about aiming too low. Yeah. And how has that shaped your, you know, well, that's your what, mindset? Well, uh, that's, I believe in that. I believe in, I've taken, we've had lots of failures, but it didn't stop us from keeping going. The big risk is to make sure you got enough money to keep going if you fail. I mean, <clears throat> we, I mean, I just got back from a trip in Texas just this two days ago, <clears throat> looking at a major investment for us in Texas. And, uh, and uh, I'm not there because I, it's a big investment for us. And uh, I'm not satisfied we can get a, 
ROIC on it, that would be satisfactory. Yeah. And that's your major indicator. I've heard you mention that a number of times, the ROIC. It's, is, my, it's, our, it's your formula. It's my, my, our, our religion here is return on invested capital. Yeah. And if the, that doesn't work, you're not moving ahead. We don't go. Yeah. That's great. And we measure everything on inve return invested capital. Yeah. It's not how, what the volume is. It isn't what the percentage is on sales. It's everything is the return on invested capital. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I've noticed about on your website is the businesses have really seemed to compound in growth in the last, you know, six to 10 years even. And what do you attribute that to? Are those just great bets? Are those, you know, they, the, the numbers, the way that they're shown on a bar chart are really impressive about the growth. We're in the food business, which we've grown. We started with one car dealership. We have 26 car dealerships now. We started with one leased car. Today we got over 30,000 mm -hmm. in Canada. And, um, and we started in the States now. Our philosophy is grow. Yeah. And you don't s seem to sell very often either. Do you? No, we don't. No. Now we have sold the odd one a company over the years and uh, uh, one of them uh, was uh, involved in sugar, and uh, and I'm getting out of the. You know, I didn't want to be in the sugar business, and uh, it was a good company, nothing wrong with it, but I didn't want to keep growing a business that was uh, heavy, uh, heavily involved in sugar. Yeah. And I noticed uh, on your website, it's pretty loud and clear that you're focused on climate change. And really, well, it's a religion with us around here that uh, we've got, and we're in the coal business. Yeah, yeah. We have got a had a wonderful company, West Shore Terminals, all coal. Yeah. And uh, it's been very successful. We've had it a long time. Good return invested capital, public company, and uh, but we have got a transition that company out of things that are not good for the environment and we've just made a deal to we just made a huge deal to start over time to ship potash out of Saskatchewan and convert the terminal from coal which we've now made a deal, signed, sealed, but not, but no, no, nothing happening yet, because yeah. we've got to transition the terminal to handle potash, and we're going to take a piece of the, of the, of the, uh, of the terminal, and, and, and it's been just announced in the last four or five weeks that we're going to uh, convert a portion of the terminal to potash. And that's a big move for us. And now we got to find other things. But we got customers in this from the states and customer customers in BC and Alberta that have been our coal customers for years and years and years with us. Mm -hmm. And we want to do the right thing by them. Right. And by the same thing, we've got to get to be more. We got to be in things more favorable to the climate. Right. And what, what does that look like to you for you know, other business owners that are either starting out or have a mature business already? Like, what's your advice to them? Because I think this is all on all our minds. Well, I'm not giving anybody advice. I'm trying <laughs> to do my own thing here. Yeah, is by get, example. Get out of anything. Like, we've had opportunities come to us I normally would have bought, but it was too unfriendly to the environment. And we've turned it down. I wouldn't have done. I didn't because we went in the coal business, yeah. uh, shipping thermal coal. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's two kinds of coal. There's the there's the, the kind of coal that uh, you can't make steel without it. And then there's then there's the other kind that that we have both, but the, we've got to concentrate on the 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 coal that is not friendly to the climate. Yeah, that's great. Now, the other thing I was curious about is, you know, 
I, I know you, you, you've said it a couple times, you don't like giving advice, but I mean, if you're thinking about passing on some wisdom to somebody that's, again, starting out or has bought their first business and maybe wants to emulate some of the, the successes that you've had, what, what would that advice look like? like what? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Don't lie. Don't cheat. When you make a mistake, own up. And, uh, but uh, always be honest. My dad and mother and I taught me that from the time, and I, we always went to church. They taught us in church to do the right thing, and my dad and mother taught me that, and, and uh, I've made a lot of mistakes, but not one of them is, is uh, lying about something. Yeah. I may I may not have told the truth, but it wasn't. I didn't know it wasn't the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you know what I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't mean didn't mean to yeah. uh, get it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, the other the other thing is about you know you have this work ethic that is sort of um, unparalleled. I would say you know you you seem to really enjoy what you're doing still. Uh, I've never heard you talk about retiring. Uh, what is that? Where does that come from? That that work ethic of just bank debt, bank debt, <laughs> <laughs> not, not done, not done paying it off yet. <laughs> I got lots of loans. I got to keep running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But now, I it, like going to work in the morning. Yeah, well, you just well, Maureen's been. She's sixty three years old, and she's been with me since she was twenty three years old. She's eighty three years old. Yeah. she's been with me sixty years. She likes coming to work too. And how, how do you do that? Like, that, that's almost unheard of, you know, you, that someone works with someone not long. How do you? No, but she likes what we do. Yeah. I mean, uh, she's, uh, <clears throat> she, the last airplane we bought, she, she's decided that, uh, that it, she went to New York and, and bought a, well, the Falcon 900 we got there. She's, she's bought all the airplanes. She runs Frank Sinatra's compound. She built the boat that we have down here, <laughs> and um, she built it down in Louisiana somewhere, and uh, I had nothing to do with it except pay for it. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I hope you like the color. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, she called the shot all the way on that. That's fantastic. Had a model and then worked from a model. Yeah, so she's having fun. No, but she's, she's been with me 60 years and started, she, I think she started with us at $2 an hour or something like that. Yeah. Unreal. And now the, 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 the structure of the business that you've created, is that something you would do it all over again the same way? You know, would you, if you were to start again? Would I, would I do things different? Absolutely. There's a lot of things I'd do different, but not the structure that we got. I, it's worked well. Yeah, definitely. That's great. I think the last thing I just wanted to sort of touch on is, you know, back to IPO for a minute. That's the reason we kind of came here. But you know, I, I, I'm trying not to say advice because you're so great about just living and, and, and sort of modeling the behavior, but, you know, what does it mean to you to be a YPOer? What, is that, what does that mean? And what, what should, well, what should you be Well, it means to me, I'm so grateful to YPO because <clears throat> the, the YPO, not only did I learn a lot, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing if it wasn't for YPO. Number two is that the, a YPO, when I was on the edge of uh, not making it, uh, flew up. I took over this uh, private uh, public company and uh, the banks called my loan uh, over one of the directors of the bank, the Royal Bank. Um, I went after his company and uh, he got the bank to call my loan. Mm. And, and this guy from YPO, and I paid them off. But he flew up and made an appointment with me to go to Toronto to meet with the Toronto Dominion Bank. And because he was a big customer in Canada with the TD Bank, he got me the money to pay the call. Unreal. YPOR. 
And did you know him well? Did you know that yeah. one? Yeah. Well, he's a guy that I got to know in YPO. Yeah. He, uh, when I went to all these meetings, he was one of them. Bob Halliday was his name, uh, and uh, and he was the number two guy in a big company in in the states. And uh, I went to one of his his lectures. Okay. And it wasn't a lecture. You sit down like this, and there was about eight or nine guys. Yeah. No women at that time, <clears throat> and uh, and I learned from him. And he was the guy that when I got into trouble, I phoned for help, and he flew up and, uh, and was the deciding and casting vote for me not to lose the control of the public company that I took private. Unreal. So that would have been a terrible... I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for YPO, number one, doing what I'm doing, and number two, he came up... It was. Because I was running a, a, I was taking a public company and using it, the stock, to trade it, and uh, and he flew up when the I didn't, I didn't take the people I'd taken the company over from off the board, yeah. and they didn't forgive me for that. But I left them there. But then when I got in trouble, they voted against me. Okay. To throw me out, and but the. Deciding and casting vote was this guy Bob Haldy from YPO. He flew up in his own airplane to come to the meeting and voted with me. And then when we the annual meeting came, I had enough uh, a control that I threw the other guys off the board <laughs> and regained control. Or I wouldn't be. Yeah. I wouldn't be here today. That's excellent. So that's YPO. Yeah. A relation then, but I, the good news with that, he got into trouble, in a in a, a a coal mine down in the Carolinas, and he got into trouble, and needed some money fast. He flew up, and I went down and endorsed a note for him, with the Bank of Montreal, and helped him out, when he got into trouble. Oh, that's just amazing. And his name was Bob Halliday, and uh, and uh, one of the smartest guys I ever met. So you returned the favor. So I had the opportunity. And Maureen Chance, she's involved in all that. She made the reservations and to get him here, made the appointment with the bank to, to help him and all of that in Canada. Yeah. So be helpful, get involved, say yes. No, but it's the people you meet. Yeah. The people that I met uh, are, at times, were the best friends I had. Yeah. They're mostly all dead now. Yeah. And and how are you involved at all much today? Or, you know, are you in a forum or anything like that? Are you still involved in YPO? No, I, I if I haven't seen an invitation to go to a <laughs> deal for a long time. Okay. We'll make sure you but get back on some, the But I've been traveling a lot too, so I do I but. Uh, no, I'm a supporter of YPO. Then you got that second group. What do you call that? It's YPO and YPO Gold. Yeah, but they didn't call it that. It used to be called WPO. Yeah. Yeah. And then I joined that. Yeah. And uh, and that's because I hadn't heard this other deal. Yeah, they just changed the name a couple of years ago. Okay. And. and uh, just because the chapters get so huge, they have to have a kind of a break in ages. Oh, sure. Otherwise, it'd be a 300-person oh, yeah. chapter. Couldn't hold an event. So, so a world that world deal. And no, I went to meetings down, and I told you in Johannesburg, South Africa. Yeah, that's so great to hear because I didn't know that because, of course, I wasn't in YPO then. But to hear how much value you've gotten out of it, how much you were really involved. Oh, I was involved. And so that's the value, is you got involved and went and showed up and met great people that have helped Not you. Not only that, when we had the meetings here in Vancouver, Maureen Chat used to do all the work with the, the, putting up the loudspeaker system, and yeah. we'd arrange the, uh, the uh, uh, place, to, uh, the hotel, and uh, she would put the whole meeting on. Yeah. I'm talking, as I... As I told you, it wasn't Canadians. It was all Washington, Oregon, 
Hawaii, and Northern California. You know, that's just, I'm so happy that you brought that up because our chapter really doesn't mingle with those other regions anymore. So that, that whole chapter now is called the, I think it's the Pacific Northwest chapter where it's got uh, Washington, Oregon, and, and, and Northern California in it. And I mean, we really don't, we don't really interact with those chapters much. We should, we should do more of that. I wouldn't be here today without it. Yeah, that's excellent. Because I wasn't going to learn what I learned from the guys in Alberta. Yeah. Or BC. Yeah. But it was those guys out of California that were getting involved in conglomerates yeah. and talking about it is what got me uh, uh, interested in conglomerates. Just thinking bigger, opening up. No, we're going into business you know nothing about. Yeah. We're in 20 businesses. We're in 20 different industries today in this company. Yeah. And the only thing I knew anything about was cars. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're into lots of different industries. Now I know a lot of things about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> but it all came, we took cars, and then from cars we went to radio, and the radio we went to le le cars, leasing, radio, groceries. And then from there we went on. It, it might be just a coincidence, but you've really picked industries that are I don't know if the recession, recession proof, but recession resistant, like food. Car, cars are, can go up and down, but they... Well, I knew that but, business. Yeah, they always, they're always necessary. So, it was that by design, do you think? You go after those ones that you knew would... No, I went after business that weren't capital intensive. I didn't have the money. Right. So, you couldn't buy a company... So, had to... I had to do everything that didn't take capital. Now, that was the first 20 years. As after that, when we started to get credit, we could afford. More capital intensive businesses. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, I, I, I appreciate your time so much. It's, this has just been eye-opening for me and, and a great... No, but it's out portion. there if you want to take advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. One last thing I'd like to just ask is, you know, I'd love to... Uh, when we have a speaker like this, a YPO, we'd like to donate to some place in your, in, in, in your um, honor. And I just wondered if you had a charity that, that you think of. You're so giving. I should also quickly mention the hospital that you've built and expanded in Surrey. I live in South Surrey. My daughter was at a sporting event in Burnaby. And she, she was running around and, and cut her foot open pretty badly in a ditch, like on some glass. And someone says, you have to go to the new Jimmy Pattison Hospital in Surrey. It's the best. So we drove out there, and the service was unbelievable. You're so giving. But we'd like to give something to somebody or some, uh, um, some charity on your behalf. And who, who would you pick and, and why? Well, we'll go talk to Maureen. Okay. <laughs> because she's in charge of all the giving. Perfect. We will do that for sure. I'm look, I haven't met her yet, but I'd like to meet her before. Okay. Uh, before well, she's we here this morning. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much again. Okay. Well, thank you really appreciate for it. the opportunity. And uh, uh, if there's anything that you think I can be helpful to uh, with YPO, uh, I would be happy to do it. Uh, that's wonderful. It's a great way to end it. Thank you so much. Okay, well come on and, and say hello to Marie. You didn't meet her coming in this morning? Okay.